All right, today we're going to go over a really simple review. And I've seen a lot of opening box reviews, a couple little ones on the Silencer Co. hybrids. Um, I have actually purchased my first hybrid uh, through Capital Armory. Super simple process with them switching, doing the uh, transfer to my SOT and then doing the paperwork through them. Um, which would be, this was my original hybrid. Um, it is the standard gray factory setup. And then the second one I got was one of the uh, more limited edition black, uh, black coated ones. Um, my SOT happened to have one in stock. So I jumped on the bandwagon when they were doing their promotion in uh, 20... Uh, it would have been 2017 with the $200 rebate and ended up buying three suppressors that year. Um, so for today's video, I've been doing testing right now with my uh, original hybrid. I run its standard ASR mount and ordinarily when I'm running it, this is the one I run on my rifles. Hence why I have the rifles only uh, suppressor wrap on it has been the best one out of the three wraps I've used. And then I run, uh, traditionally, unless I'm just on the rifle range, my black with most of my pistol configurations. Um, I have been running the first hybrid for just over about a year, almost a year and a half, and the second hybrid for about nine months. Both of which suppressors have, in my opinion, I used to work for a gun shop that built suppressors, they have performed flawlessly. I've never had any issues. I've run them on a host of different rifles, pistols. Um, I'm going to do a little bit of mounting, putting them onto some of my guns. Um, two pistols, two rifles, just to show you how, you know, the ease of everything. Um, basically, I'm here to do a review saying, hey, is it the best? Is it the worst? Is it a good in between? What I'm saying is it's a damn good suppressor for the price point. It does pretty much everything I have threaded wise with the exception of rimfire. Uh, the, the mounting systems, it's, it's, it is a toolbox. That's the easiest way to describe it. You have a, you have a, the actual suppressor body, baffles it is not user serviceable it is a welded baffle system um, there's really no cleaning to it uh, even in their recommendation for cleaning run a uh, I believe it was a 20 gauge bore brush to knock the carbon build up on the end of the cones and that's it um, honestly my original configuration I've probably put well over 2,000 rounds through it the one time I knocked the crud off, there was almost nothing to come out. Very, very clean running cans. Um, the the hybrid itself is, uh, some people call it a money pit. I don't. I look at it as I have two suppressors that do everything from... I mean, if you wanted to hang something this heavy off of it, 5, 7 by 28, your rim fire, or your uh, center fires. Um, we've ran it on one of my buddy's 17 Remingtons. We've taken it all the way up to 300 wind mag and center fire uh, magnum cartridges. I don't have a 338 Lapua yet, but I might in the future. It's rated all the way up to 338 Lapua. Um, in Ohio, they allowed straight wall cartridges finally in, in all configurations. So I do run uh, my first suppressor on a uh, Ruger American Ranch and 450 Bushmaster. There's other videos on my page of that. Um, started running some Black Butterfly uh, 425 grain, I believe it was, Buzzsaw. Subsonic ammo through it. Took a deer with it this year. Did phenomenal. Um, does great on the 450 Bushmaster with Hornady 250 grain full loads. Um, popped several deer with that in the woods. And never once have I had that, you know, 30 minute ear ringing afterwards. Uh, give you a little history. I'm half deaf in both ears from construction. 
Um, and I got into suppressors essentially just because of my hearing to keep it good. You know, until I'm up into my 80s or, you know, God, I get there. But, uh, so this is down the road. Had one over a year. Had the other one not quite a year. And doing phenomenal. Um, the things that suck slash don't suck. Both suppressors come out of the box with a uh, piston boost, a booster assembly. The spring and the cap whoop the cap for it they do not come with a piston as every other video will let you know and the, when you buy it um buy the piston for what you need this one right here is my half 28 for nine millimeter um and then it also comes with the 5 8 by 24 direct thread rifle mount um honestly never used it you can buy the ASR mount to go with their ASR line of muzzle brakes and flash hiders. And as you'll see in one of my uh, my lever action, I have the nano brake. Um, love the ASR mount. Some guys say that the ASR isn't as repeatable as other mounts. Um, I have, you know, as long as I'm running the same ASR mount and the same suppressor with the same end cap, I never have noticed any shift differential taking it on, putting it back, you know, taking it off, putting it back on. I have uh, tested a five shot group on a 223 last summer, and it was almost identical group sizes to the one I shot prior, never taking the suppressor off once during a five shot group. Um, I have, I am one of the guys that has gone through and bought a bunch of the accessories just because. You know, as you can see, I have the end caps. I have the 223 end cap, the 30 cal end cap, the uh, 9 millimeter end cap, and then obviously the factory 46 end cap it comes with. I also have the 30 caliber anchor brake. Um, for you that don't know it, it does help. You will notice a slight little bit more noise to the shooter. Um, it does actually help cut down on downrange sonic crack because it disperses it a little quicker. And then I also have the 46 caliber anchor brake. Um, all of these end caps, the standard flats, I have two of each for each suppressor. The anchor brakes, I predominantly only run the one in a full rifle configuration unless it's got 223. So I only have one of each end cap. Granted, everything here. Your suppressors, um, this one I got, it was uh, 900 through Capital Armory. Not horrible. The industry's kind of came down a little bit, but I did get a free uh, Silencer Co. Warlock 2 when I purchased it, so it's kind of a wash. The second one I picked up in black, I believe I paid $750 for through my SOT locally um, and did a deal with him. I picked up a Hunter Town Arms, and then as I did paperwork on it, they went out of business. Sucks, good company, quality product, just a little bit older designs. Um, so, running down the list of things, you know, as you see it here, if we take my standard can out and call it, you're just buying one suppressor and you want to do everything. You want to do all a hybrid can do. I don't run anything three lug, so I don't have any three lug pieces and parts here. Sorry if that, you know, if that's what you want to do. I just don't have anything for three lug. But when you run down the list, I've kind of watched. I don't need anything. You can just run a 46 caliber end cap and buy a direct thread or you run the direct thread. But going from 6.5 Creedmoor I, is one of the predominant guns I run my other host on. Uh, going from a 46 to the 30 cal end cap. Not a huge decimal difference, but definitely to the ear, you can tell there's a difference. It's probably about three decibels on average. Um, yeah, excuse me, 30 cal, 9 mil. Um, 223, big difference. Going from the 46 caliber end cap to the designated 223 end cap, it is huge. It is probably, I'd say, 8 to 10 decimal difference. And it does help capture the pressure a little bit, since, you know, hence why it is a little bit quieter. 
but in the process of everything happening, you also do get a touch less felt recoil because you're kind of capturing that pressure a little bit more. I also run adjustable gas blocks on all my semi-auto builds, so whenever I'm running suppressed, I tune my gas blocks to run suppressed. Um, normally it's about, I, I run a 18 click adjustable gas block. Normally I take two clicks cl more closed and I'm good to go. Um, so getting down to the gist of everything, uh, you, you, sometimes I've had SOTs, uh, mine specifically that have ran promotional sales that are nice enough to pass along their buying. They'll buy in 10 of them when, you know, Silencer Co or whoever runs a promotion. Uh, just last summer, one of my friends was able to pick up this same suppressor through them, Silencer Co Hybrid. He paid six seventy five for it. Awesome, you know, for that price, I'd have bought another one if I if I would have needed one. I already have two. I have two mostly because me and my wife shoot together. It does make it nice when we're shooting together to both be able to run our rifles suppressed. So getting down to the cut dry of you know how everything goes out if you get into one predominantly i see them they're about 800 plus the tax stamp we're at a thousand dollars you get your suppressor the booster assembly with no booster direct thread uh, 5 8 by 24 mount um if you go with just another, say you're not going to do as much rifle with it, you just buy another direct thread. They're like about 120 bucks from what I'm seeing. I picked up my ASR mount through Silencer Co. because I had the rebate through them for $200 for each suppressor. I had $600 in rebates to use up, so I spent the extra couple bucks, bought my ASR mount through them. The second ASR mount I bought, which is currently in the other one, um, I ended up buying, I believe it was through Capital Armory when they were doing a promotional sale, might have been Labor Day or something like that, and I ended up getting it for, I believe, $125. Um, the boosters, normally around $70, $75. Bucks. If you go to Midway USA where I buy everything, they still haven't quite realized MSRP pricing is just a recommendation. Um, I bought mine on sale, uh, both of my boosters, my 5 8 or... Uh, 575 the 45 ACP I can't remember the thread pattern off the top of my head and this one at the same time through Capital Armory on their sale I do remember they were 6250 a piece which pretty good for those um, it's kind of odd but the end caps doesn't matter if it's the anchor break or the regular end cap run about the same price between 75 and 90 dollars depending on where you go I've not bought any of my accessories that weren't on sale at the time. I've not spent over 70 bucks on each of these accessories. So you get into a little bit of money. But I can do 223 through this suppressor. You're pretty close to the same decibels as a standard suppressor. What do you lose? Well, your decibel rating is almost the same. If your decimal rating is almost the same, What's the con of the suppressor? Well, it weighs probably four or five ounces more than a standard 223 suppressor. Not too bad. Take the same suppressor, put it to a 30 cal end cap, run it on a 308. You're in the same ballpark sound wise as a lot of 30 cal suppressors. You're also coming in about the same weight. The hollow tube is right around 15 ounces with ASR mount and an end cap. It's about 17 and a half, 18 ounces. Realistically, that's a lot of suppressors in this same, you know, same size wise. When you get into the pistols, that's where it gets a little bit off the wall. You're with pistol, with mount and all that, you're around 15, 16 ounces, which is kind of heavy for a pistol. Also, you're at a 1.56 inch tube and a 1.56 inch tube is predominantly a little bit larger than most of your pistol suppressors. Um, for instance, the, the one of the new dead air suppressors is like 1.1, but it's actually a bit longer. So it, it's not a perfect suppressor in the fact of the matter of each caliber it works for is a little different. Now, when you look at this suppressor, being able to go onto a 4570, 450 Bushmaster, 458 SOCOM, and then you can take it 
and do 30 seconds worth of swapping and put it onto your 9mm. That's something not many suppressors can do. There are other ones out there. Um, not going to bother to start listing them off, but I've looked through them. There's, there's not a whole lot different, but I just feel like the Silencer Co. has kind of been around doing it. They've done a lot of development to make this suppressor as quality as it can be. Um, just a little overview. I'm going to take the adapter housing for 9mm. Um, this one has not been shot too much. Drop the booster in. Um, some people call it the booster. Some people call it the Nelson device. The original proper term is Nelson device. Um, Silencer Co. calls them a booster. So for the sake of it, that's what I kind of refer to them as. I'm not going to get crazy with using the tools today. The, the original package when you buy it comes with the two spanner tools to get these on and off nicely and the multi-tool for taking the end caps on and off putting the uh, muzzle devices and that on and it works out pretty well so when you're all said and done we go on ahead we put the pistol booster in the back select my nine millimeter end cap put the nine millimeter end cap on and snug it up and now you're ready to go onto your nine millimeter. Now because I have two of these suppressors, I also have the second booster that is uh, set up with my piston for my 45 ACP, my 1911. Um, so at this point in time, I'm just gonna go on ahead um, this is my Glock 34, nothing special to it. I've added the Silencer Co. threaded barrel, some Trigicon suppressor height night sights, um, little talon grips, like them. They're a little gritty when you're holstering them because I went with the grip instead of the rubberized. But as far as it goes with this can on this, on this gun, I, I, the height of the sights and the top of the can are almost identically the same height. I have no issue shooting accurate groupings on target every time with this setup, even though you really can't 100% get a perfect sight picture. But when you look at the top of it to the top of it, right down the top of the can, you're pretty well good to go. This firearm is clear. There's no ammo on my bench, no magazines around for it, and it is ready to go. Um, so I'll take off the thread protector which th this barrel, I honestly will say, has proven to be more accurate um, with a variety of loads than I expected. Um, no functioning issues, nothing. And at this point in time, like I said, I'm not gonna crank anything. We now have a Glock 34 running the Silencer Co. Hybrid. I am an amateur videoist, so don't don't bitch too much and pick me apart for my video quality. But there you have it. It's not hard to keep up. The stability is almost perfect. I like the sight picture on it. Um, if you go to my Instagram account, I hate to be that guy, but there's a lot of videos and you know stuff for me shooting this gun and others. Um, I'm just a guy that likes to, likes guns. I'm not really, you know, I'm not any of the guys. I'm not Eric Veteran 8888 or, you know, Hickok 45 or anybody like that. Um, I'm just a shooter and a hunter. But the then it's as simple for me right now. Granted, normally you'd have to pull your tools out, but pull the end cap back off. And we're going to go on ahead at this point, swap it to the 46 caliber end cap. And then it's ordinarily at this point, because I'm switching calibers, you would go on ahead, pull this back apart, swap your booster size to the proper one. Um, I get the cheat because I have two hybrids. I don't have to mess around with all the disassembly of that. 
I just go ahead and pull the half 28 out, take my other booster that's set up with my 45 uh, one mount for my 1911, thread it in, and at this point in time it's ready to go on to my 1911. Again, uh, this is a, I got a couple videos on my channel with this gun in it. It is a uh, Kimber Aegis Elite Custom IO with the Vortex Venom Red Dot on it. Um, Vort uh, Kimber does have some threaded barrel options, but at the time when I bought this gun, they were out of stock. I sat around waiting for two months. They were still out of stock. I contacted them. They basically said, well, when we run them, they're on, on our website. We'll, you know, keep checking the website. Waited for another couple weeks, got impatient, and went on ahead and bought a Gunsmith Fit Ed Brown edition, or Ed Brown barrel. Um, fitted it. it. Wasn't too bad. I've done it before with other, other 1911s, and it shoots just as good as the factory barrel. Um... So at this point, we're you know we've already swapped our end cap to a 46 caliber end cap. We we'll put the piston in for the 19 for the uh, 45, and these threads are a little bit fine. So you know just like any pistol suppressor, um, the only downfall, and it's with any suppressor, pistol, or rifle, is until you've shot these a good bit and really gotten the. Uh, threads kind of dirty it's one of the few things i do not recommend cleaning on these are your threads because that grit you'll see it in other people say it that grit in the threads really helps keep it from loosening up on you um when i normally shoot this gun i wear a set of the mechanics gloves that way periodically on any of mine pistols i can just kind of give it a little snug up um and that's the Kimber Aegis Elite Custom um, with the Silencer Co. Hybrid. One thing I will say that I really like about this gun, and I guess it's just a personal preference, but the stock Silencer Co. Gray and it are almost a perfect match. Um, I really wish Kimber would go on ahead and just release this with a factory threaded barrel. I think it'd be an awesome gun. Um, again, the suppressor height sights actually do, um, about half of the dot clears the suppressor. The red dot itself perfectly clears. This gun right here is one of my personal range favorites. I don't care what I'm doing. If I'm going to the range, this setup's coming with me. Um, and then at this point, it's going to be a little bit more difficult because I don't feel like messing around with changing camera angles and editing videos because I'm using an Apple iPhone instead of a camera and I don't actually own editing software so makes that a little bit difficult but uh other than that it's a pretty pretty cut and dry video today I don't want to go too long because you know I don't want to bore the shit out of all you listening to me talk um but so like I said ordinarily I don't run this one suppressed on a rifle or this suppressor on a rifle that much unless there's more than one of us shooting um, at the range close by or whatever or if I have two guns um, sometimes when I go out coyote hunting or groundhog hunting I will run two setups I'll run this one on the 556 uh, I got a 16 and a half inch AR that I run it on and I'll have the other hybrid on a uh, 6.5 Creedmoor um, it's a Ruger target varmint 28 inch barreled 6.5 Creedmoor that I have uh, had threaded and not too much done to it but does a thousand yards perfectly fine so what I'll do now to show you um, gonna get kind of boring not gonna lie just because we're gonna play around with swapping stuff around um, if we take the we'll go on ahead and take the end cap off there we're gonna go on ahead and pull the booster assembly out the back now um, I'm gonna sit these side by side for now and then at this point I'm gonna go on ahead and take this ASR mount put it onto this can um, 
and this one has been shot a little bit more so it is a little bit stiffer to get in which is nice because you don't have to worry about it walking or backing off or anything um i'm not going to crank it all the way down because i don't want to have to break out the tools and then for this one i'm going to put the nine millimeter end cap on because right now i'm going to show you two setups um, one of them being my lever action which if you go to my other videos there's a video on it Again, just so everybody gets all happy, the rifle is clear, nothing in it. This is the Marlin 1894 CST threaded, running the single port 9mm uh, brake on it. I have done a little action work, not much movement there. And then at this point you can just take your hybrid, make sure whenever you're going to put it on and off, that you pay attention to your indicator and that your teeth aren't closed in. If it is, it makes it a little bit difficult to put it together. AKA, it's not going to go. So at this point in time, now I've got this suppressor locked onto my Marlin 1894 CST. Check out that video. It's a short one. I'm trying to get into longer videos, but... When you have snail speed internet through at t you'll run into that. Um, fun gun, very accurate, very easy to use. And the nice thing is I upgraded, as you can see, to the uh, XS full rail system, which gives it a slightly higher post. Try to get that angle right. And with the suppressor on there, with no, shield, or, uh, no heater, uh, bleh, suppressor wraps on it, it sits perfect to be able to shoot. Um, I run factory uh, Magtech 38 specials through this uh, setup, and it literally will roll them out, no issues, subsonic every shot, and it is just a fun setup. Um, next, so I can get it into the video a little bit better, this is the uh, barrel off my Ruger PC carbine. Very fun to shoot 9mm. Block mags, 147 grain, pretty much anything ammo. Stay subsonic out of the gun, even though it's a 16 and 16 and a half inch barrel. Same, same suppressor, same configuration. And right on to another 9mm nano brake. Um, sights are very easy to see on this gun. I do have a, a Strike Eagle 1 to 6 on this gun. It is uh, the PC Carbine. I'd love to do a review on it for you guys. It is a very accurate little 9mm. I mean, for a 9mm at 100 yards, I'll take less than a 2 inch group as a pretty successful shooting experience. Next up, we're going to go on ahead, leave the same ASR mount in there. This is that whole toolbox. We're going to go on ahead, we're going to swap out end caps, take the 9mm off, go to the 5.56, 223 end cap. Um, put that on there, and then that one's ready to go. And because it's the most handy, um, we're going to go ahead and put it on my new Craddock Precision 224 Valkyrie barrel. Right on. Snug it up. Lock the ring. Good to go. I also, at this time, my, uh, my other hybrid, this is the one that's been getting ran on it right now. Um, through rifles only. Uh... Honestly, out of all the suppressor wraps, I've probably tried three or four. This one has been my all-time favorite. Good look, quality, really holds tight. Um, some guys will take the back wrap and wrap it around the back onto the barrel. I leave mine in front of the ASR mount. I really have no issue with it walking forward with it snugged up nicely. Um, take that back out. This uh, 
For an AR, it's a 26 inch barrel and it weighs 13 pounds. It's a little heavy to carry. So that's right now all the host stuff I'm going to go over. Kind of gave you an example. Pistols, rifles, um, my 6.5 Creedmoor, it's kind of pointless to try to get a 28 inch barrel into here. You've seen two rifles, you understand how the ASR mount works. I like it. Um, pretty quick and easy. I will say this, and I, you'll find it a lot online. If you're running the ASR mount, and you heat this can up shooting it on one gun and you got to put your hot mitts out and take your wife's oven oven gloves because you're going to bake the crap out of this suppressor that day and don't take this hot ass mount off of your gun swap it and bring it over and put it onto another gun with a cold mount the only downfall i found it's a principle of hot metal cold metal this thing's hot, it's expanded. You put it onto the other gun, it's cold. That one's gonna cool this one a little, contract it. Even if you got that one roasting hot, you're still gonna fight it to get it off. You look kinda, kinda sucks when you're at the range and I got, you got this on your muzzle brake trying to hold it still and this spanner wrench trying to break it free. It's just not a fun day at the range when you gotta start messing around with things. Um, the tools are super simple. There is one guy, I'm going to be trying to pick one up by the name of uh, Warren Innovations, uh, suppressortools.com has a super wrench for this. It'll do the end cap, it'll do the mounts, um, it'll do a couple different things with it. It works pretty well from what everybody says. Only downfall I really found is he can't, you know, you can't duplicate these spanner tools. The spanner tools work really well, but I'd love to find something that was a more high density poly that ain't got to worry about it. I've nicked them up a few times slipping with those spanner wrenches. But the end cap tool works really well though. Pop it in, three lug, this one's not that tight. Twist the can, you're good to go. Um, when you're running the hybrid, it does get a little bit bulky. You got, you can do it a lot of ways. I, I have, because uh, to me, Pelican versus everybody else, I love Pelican coolers. I got a couple, I got a Pelican cooler, Pelican rifle case. Love them. Problem is, is when I'm carrying my suppressors around to the range and that, I really couldn't find one that I wanted Pelican case wise for my suppressors. That wasn't $200. Um, I've got two Apache cases. The Harbor Freight Specials, one cost me 30 bucks, the other one cost me 50 bucks. The first one I run when I'm just going to go to the range, one or two rifles, one suppressor, maybe one suppressor and a couple accessories. Um, just, it's an investment. You got a $200 tax stamp, you've spent all the money and the time to wait. These are durable, but last thing I want to do is have that one day where something happens and this thing gets crushed. Got a lifetime VIP warranties on them and all that. I'm sure they'd take care on it, but it's still a pain in the ass. Um, other than that, there's really not a lot left on this can to go over. The fit and finish of them are great. Um, I've ran, I will say this, probably won't show up very well, but if you look right here and right here, there's two marks. That's a... Uh, suppressor cover goo as i call it when you're testing out covers don't wait till you see the melting coming through to actually go yep this one sucks because i shot one mag semi rapid fire and the suppressor the suppressor cover is melting down um there are other suppressor covers that on the market besides the rifle only.com um i've just found this one for what it does and the, the quality of it is pretty damn good. I've got this thing wound up pretty damn tight, as you can see. And I haven't really had any issues with heat through. Um, 
I do have a uh, Raunch, I believe it's Raunch Firearms, uh, American Flag one. This one does really well. It's not nearly as thick. It is the American Flag, so I like it. Um, does a good job. They, they straight up recommend bold action, not rapid fire. And if you treat it that way, this one's held up pretty good. I won't say, I won't bother to dig into the other companies that I tried their suppressor wraps and just really didn't care for them or didn't, you know, uh, this is the, I believe it was the had by rifles only $94 versus other companies that are, you know, 150 bucks for a wrap that's rated at the same temperature with almost the same design. Um, plus I've heard some of those other ones, they like to slip and move around a lot. Didn't really care for that on my rifles that I'm taking out hunting and everything else. Um, upsides and downside recap. Basically, you're in a little bit more price point than, a off, you know, another brand for 223 can for 400 bucks and, yeah, well, you can get a 223 can or a 30 caliber can for 400 bucks nowadays, and I can get a 45 can for this much and run it. Well, if you buy a 45 can, you're going to run on nine. You still got to buy the accessories, regardless. Um, some of the 45 cans you can't take go from the 45 end cap or the 46 in this case down to a nine millimeter end cap. Um, there is a bit of reduction on that. I'm not going to lie. I didn't think there would be as much, but matching the end cap, you do, you do get a little bit of reduction out of it. Um, you get into a lot of the rifle cans, you know, you buy two cans, you buy three cans. When it's said and done, you, you got, you know, we'll just say two cans, $400 a piece. That's 800 bucks. Well, now you got a good 30 cal can you can run on your 223 and a good 45 can you can run on your nine millimeter. You got 800 bucks, 800 bucks. You got $400 in tax stamps. Well, I have a thousand between suppressor and tax stamp. So my $200 savings, I can buy my booster, buy some end caps, buy the ASR amount. I run a muzzle brake on every gun that I have that's threaded that it's a rifle. I'm gonna run it, you know, run the muzzle brake regardless. Direct thread, a lot of guys, precision shooters want the direct thread, that's fine. I like the ASR quick attach system just because of the, you know, when I'm not shooting it or if for some reason I go to a state that I couldn't hunt with a suppressor, I can run the muzzle brake, faster follow-up shots. Um, also, I don't have one. I've looked into them. They, my buddy bought one. I'll probably do a review on it with his rifle when we're done building it. Um, Lantec just came out with a Lantec Dragon ASR mount with the silencer co setup to be able to run on here. I do have a 30 caliber ASR mount, um, three baffle muzzle brake right here. They are very nice. Um, this one was on a, uh, during a blackout for a while of its life, shot really well on that gun, even running, it was a 300 blackout pistol running subsonics. It never missed a beat. Uh, didn't have to run a flaming pit or on it or any of that stuff. Um, but it's just a simple setup. Put it on. Get it seated. Lock the thing. Oop. You got to watch that. Sometimes you're in between on the gears in the back. You got to give it a little bit more twist to it. Lock that ring in. You're good to go. Flip it off. Back it back off, and you're set. So ordinarily, these muzzle brakes, 75 bucks. Sometimes you'll find them on sale for in the 60s. Um, a lot of good companies out there running sales on them. Don't mind the blue. That's from my. Uh, I run the Pro Slick cleaners, and this one hasn't been fully cleaned and bathed since it came off of the last gun it was on. Um, as far as it goes, that's a Silencer Co. Hybrid. You got any questions for me? Give me a holler on it. Um, I'll put a uh, put my info in the description for my Instagram. It's Seahall three fifty at at sign before. Um, the videos are gonna start rolling out a lot this year. I uh, slowed up a lot last year. Me and the wife had a beautiful little baby girl. 
um, last September, really slowed down with everything. Got a couple new builds that I'm going to try to do a little bit longer videos. Um, working on ditching snail speed internet at 6 bit and going to be trying to go up to 100 bit internet. Um, probably fiber, make it a little bit easier for me. Um, as far as it goes with the hybrid, you, you see a lot of reviews. Some guys absolutely bashing it, some guys absolutely loving it. I'm one of those guys that absolutely love this suppressor. It has been a proven performer. It has not given me any issues. Um, been at the range with several other people running suppressed around me. Um, most of the ranges I shoot at are private ranges. But uh, when I get to the public range, there always seems to be one or two other guys running suppressed these days, which is awesome. I think everybody should run suppressed. It just makes my life easier. I have a suppressor. You should too. Um, nowhere near as hard as you think it is. Get out there. Look at them. Decide what you want. Silencer Co. is a great brand. Um, company I used to work for made some decent suppressors. I don't really care for them that much. I'd rather spend the extra money. Um, cheaper is not always better. Just remember that. You know, you get out there, you're not going to go buy the cheapest pile of shit gun you can buy. You, you know, why take a $300 suppressor and put it on a you know, $2,000 rifle that you've built? I have noticed several guys that I've shot with that 308s, their, their guns, trying to shoot them, they're just not quite where they're at. Some of those systems, I, one of the things I love about this can, I will say this, I forgot to mention it, having the fully welded baffle system in there that's not serviceable, I have seen the most repeatable out of, a, out of any suppressor I've shot. Take it apart, clean it, put it back together. I pretty much never clean my mounting system threads. I will get in here and clean this crud up, but I don't clean the threads. Dirty threads, I mean, if they're disgusting, you probably not doing something right, snugging them up enough, but ordinarily that little bit of grit in there keeps them tight. But that fully welded baffle system really rocks because it literally goes out there, rifle after rifle, setup after setup, it works. Um, one of the things I am working on doing is because I have two end caps for each caliber, I'm trying to, I'm going to be doing some sort of a marking on them so that way I know. This end cap goes with this suppressor. Right now I have my case set up to where my case is my identification. Um, my case kind of holds everything and I just have them in order. The top one, top suppressor goes, or the top mount goes with my, my old suppressor. The other one goes with the newer black one. Um, oh, let's think here. Anything I didn't cover. I guess we'll go with a money shot on how much everything's going to run you. Yeah, ordinarily most people don't have more than about two or three piston boosters. You're going to have about, a, you know, if you got two piston boosters, call it 150 bucks. If you want to call it $75 for an end cap, because that's the average price, buy the three extra end caps, five in my case, because I have all of them. Do the math nice and quick. That's $375. So you're at, 525 for all the little accessories that you see in my photo here then add in we'll just say the uh the asr device not going to go msrp on that it's about 130 bucks so you're looking about we'll just say 525 plus 130 so 655 yeah you got a lot of accessories you don't need the extra end caps if you don't want them you can run the 46 but just like anything, you got a 46 caliber th uh, baffles. You go into the fact of the matter of you're reducing that, you're cons pulling that pressure in, you're going to get a better quality sound, better decimal reduction. A little bit less felt recoil, I've noticed. Um, if, you got a, if you're going to run it on a rifle, 6.5 Creedmoor, I've ran this anchor brake with a 22, or a 223, 5.56. Five, it really doesn't change much. Um, running it on 6.5 Creedmoor versus the standard 30 cal, it helps. This guy on the 450 Bushmaster is phenomenal. Um, the one deer I shot this year running uh, the Black Butterfly 425 grain buzzsaw uh, subsonic ammo. They had two more behind it. Um, 
unfortunately in Ohio, you got to have one tag before you shoot a second one. I actually waited so I didn't spook him. Got out of my stand, tagged that one, was back in my truck. My buddy came over by my stand and ended up taking one of the other deer. So it works. I'm not going to lie. It's a great system. But, you know, you look into it, you know, okay, so for everything I got, suppressor tax stamp all the accessories 16 1700 bucks but you have one can you have one tax stamp you don't have to worry about going around with all your extra tax stamps and you know juggling three or four cans you can take and make one nice little setup um also a little shout out the uh the rifleonly.com suppressor pouch with their uh really nice heat temp i have I've got these suppressors pretty hot before, and I'll tell you, you put that over the end of it, grab onto it, let it sit in there, throw it right in the bag, you ain't got to worry about your bag melting down or catching on fire or anything like that. Um, the I've said it a few times, I'll do another review on this one. I've had it for, uh, again, since October 17 when I got my uh, first hybrid. Um, the... Uh, Next video I'm going to try to do, if I can get it done today, I will. It's going to be a lot shorter of a thing as the uh, the video I'm going to do on the uh, Silencer Co. Warlock 2. This one I've added the Gemtech 4 lug quick attach system on it. If you run a lot of 22, uh, that's an awesome thing to have. It is a lot of fun. Um, last thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of do a quick overview. Show you guys how I have... Uh, I'd love to get one without pick foam, but the uh, Apache case here, I'll show you my setup with that because that's going to be the last thing i got to do with my camera before I stop the video. Again, like I said, any questions, comments, anything you want to see, maybe I'll do an add-on to the next video um, before I turn out that Warlock. Um, I am running this on my lever action tomorrow and I'm still shooting the other one, so I'm going to go ahead and throw this back in there for now. Um, I know this is probably the shittiest camera video you've ever seen, but I'm hoping as a guy that likes the hybrid, shoots the hybrid, and, you know, the hillbilly from Ohio, however you want to call it, this has uh, been one of my favorite setups to run. Um, my little setup I got going on here with my Apache case, I'll show you that real quick and then we'll close out. Probably no way this video is ever going to upload to YouTube, but so this is what I got set up here with my Apache case. Here's my 45 booster housing. Here's my 9 millimeter booster housing. 46 caliber end cap, anchor brake, 30 caliber anchor brake. I have uh, spots up here for other accessories when if I decide to buy anchor brakes for those. There's my 5 8 by 24 direct thread spots. Here's my uh, 46 caliber end cap. I got both of those there. And then my 9 millimeter end caps go there. My 30 caliber end cap goes right down in here. And my 223 end cap goes right down in there. So it's all said and done. Um, normally I have the pouch on my other, other cap. And then I will put my other suppressor wraps. The, my, I used one of the suppressor bags as my tool pouch for my tools. I know I'll slip it up there. Everything works pretty well. And then hiding behind the luxury of foam are four tack stamps. So hopefully today, guys, that covers a little bit of stuff. Um, if you want to see any other reviews, um, the Glock 34, it's a Glock. There's really not much to review. Uh, the Kimber Aegis Elite. They asked me to kind of not review too much sometimes because uh, they didn't like the fact that I keep bashing that they don't put a thread of barrel in there. Gun quality, awesome. Do you guys want to see another review? Let me know. I got some basic guns, nothing crazy. A couple of ARs that are all, all my ARs are built. Um... Ruger, Amer Ruger American Ranch 450 Bushmaster. I've done quite a few shooting videos on it, but never a review video. Um, 
yeah, let me know. The Marlin, I do have a video I'm going to do on it sooner than later. Hopefully it'll just be a real nice, easy review of it. The quality, fit, finish, get rid of that. Everybody that, oh, Remington bought them out. They're a bunch of junk now mentality. Um, and the last time I do, y'all, yeah, let's just give you a little view of my understanding wife letting me have all my shit down here. So this is my little workstation. Nice husky bench. Got the TV up top. A little bit of organization. There. Well, time for a nice stocked up humidor. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Everybody just make sure you shoot, shoot safe. Try to shoot suppressed. Get into it. If you got questions on it, try to get a hold of me. I'll do the best to answer what you got.